In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, church. We don't hear from Micah that often in the readings on Sunday, but uh, he's an important Old Testament prophet. And um, the role of prophets was this, to get the people's attention and remind them of the promises they had made to God and to get it together, to be faithful. And when the people of God were in trouble or depressed or not faring well, to speak to them words of encouragement. You'll be okay. God will take care of you. And so the incident of uh, this event when Michael, Micah is preaching or teaching or speaking to the people of Judah is this. The Assyrian Empire, great and powerful and led by King Zennacherib, was moving towards, through Judah, moving towards Jerusalem and in his time in Judah, he destroyed many, many cities. Um, he was approaching Jerusalem and actually could not breach the wall to go into Jerusalem, but he did a lot of, a lot of damage to the Jewish people, the Hebrew people in that area. So in essence, Micah is saying to the Hebrews, you have endured much devastation and turmoil. God will give you a leader who will provide security and peace. That's what he's saying, in the, and the quote is this, which you heard earlier, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the world, and talking about the leader, and he shall be one of peace. That's what the prophet was saying to those people who were not in a good place. It's going to be okay. Well, for us Christians, 700 years later, Jesus, our Prince of Peace, was born. Well, last week for us Americans, there was not much peace in our country. Whether it was net network or public or cable TV news, reporters were using words like crisis, chaotic, irresponsible and desperate to describe the White House, the Congress, and Wall Street. Which left us, which leaves us with one big question. Why can't our elected officials get together and do what is good for this nation? And that question is emotionally connected to several other things like a thick anxiety about the current status. Like, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't feel good to us citizens of the United States. And an aching tension about the conflict. Like, please stop it. It's too painful, this tension that exists in, among our leadership and an ominous fear for the future. Can it get worse? So on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we're going to put all of that aside for a minute and turn to Mary, to Mary. It was not an invasion of the Assyrian army or the dysfunction of national leaders that interrupted her peace, that peace and security of a 12-year-old Jewish girl who was engaged but not married. What caused her anxiety and fear was, in fact, the word of God through Gabriel, through the angel, saying to Mary, you will give birth to the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. That's what disturbed her life. That's what gave her anxiety. That caused, that's what caused her to be fearful. 
And yet her response was amazing. Maybe even, maybe even miraculous. Yes, she was afraid and anxious. Why not? Anyone would be. And yet, and yet, that little girl, 12, 13, 14, whatever age she was, that little unmarried girl, somehow was able to say, I believe and I trust you, God. Somehow, after the original shark, she was able to say, yes, I will do what you ask, and I trust you that it will work out. Now, how she was able to do that, God knows, literally God knows, because it was so strange, so wild, so different. And yet, maybe because of the way she was brought up, maybe because she was really formed well in her faith, maybe she really had the inner courage and strength to, to be able to carefully listen to what she was hearing and discern that it wasn't some crazy voice, but in fact, the voice of God. Maybe she just was that spiritually mature. I guess so. Because she believed and trusted. And the next thing she did after she got it clear in her heart and her mind is that uh, she went with haste to visit her cousin or aunt. She was a kinfolk, and obviously they had a good relationship. Uh, Elizabeth was much older than Mary, and um, she was past the time of giving birth. Um, um, and, but she wanted, Mary wanted uh, probably to share this information with somebody and there must have been a good relationship, a good trust relationship there, because she did go with haste and, and got there, and there was that relationship, there was that greeting. It had so many different aspects of both being pregnant, both being in a tough situation, and both being supportive. In other words, in other words, Mary was taking her news and commitment to a person with whom she had a strong relationship for support, for guidance, and maybe even for comfort for Elizabeth, who knows. Anyway, she shared it. And, it, and right there, right there, she becomes an example for faith communities. In that case, a Jewish faith community, in our case, a church. Is that when we do sort of get to a realization of God in our lives, a good thing for us to do is to check it out with some other faithful members of our faith community just to make sure to get confirmation. Well, that's what Mary did. She was scared, she believed, she shared. But not only that. That hymn at the end of the reading today is called the Magnificat, which we love. It's, it's, it's a classic piece of biblical literature. And in that hymn, she proclaims both the compassion and justice of God. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. She's, she's saying that God loves me and he'll take care of me. God is asking me to do something quite important, but God loves me and, take his, and takes care of me. And she says... He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. Remember I said earlier that a prophet was there to affirm and also challenge. Well, that's exactly what Mary is doing here. Um, in that hymn, she is feeling affirmed and she is putting forth really a challenge of what God can do in humanity. Well, on this fourth Sunday in Advent, we are encouraged through this scripture to stay calm. Whatever's going on in our lives, it might just be seasonal busyness, or it might be something a whole lot more. It might be grief. It might be challenging. But scripture is, is encouraging us in the season to to stay calm so that we can make the most of this time in the church year. 
so that we can wait and watch and listen to what God is saying to us. And this season is encouraging us to remain engaged. Again, that might happen with a family gathering or a friend gathering or whatever, but, but to stay in touch with people around this critical event of our faith, the birth of Jesus, to stay in touch with people and to talk about how this, how this affects us, especially what Mary is doing in the reading today. And scripture is encouraging us to prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of God incarnate and to proclaim the full truth of Jesus Christ who loves us with both God's love and challenges us with God's justice. It's a rich time. It's not just another day to wrap those Christmas presents. It is a rich time for our spiritual journeys. So to make the most of this day, a very special day of remembering Mary and her faithfulness from deep within our heart and how we too are called to do the same thing as we prepare for tomorrow. Amen.